Hey guys, so over the weekend I have been de-googling my phone. I finally got round to installing the F-Droid repository for Android and sort of uh, one thing led to another and now uh, I've basically seen how few Google services I can use on my Android phone while still retaining the maximum usability of it. And today I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the choices that I made. Now, I originally decided to install the F-Droid repository because I used the uh, Twitter client Twidair to uh, browse my Mastodon uh, profile. So for those of you that don't know, I'm on Mastodon. It's a new federated social network. I'll put a link to my um, account down in the comment section below. I'm sure many of you have heard about it by now because it does seem to be gathering some degree of momentum specifically in uh, tech circles because I presume of how it's put together. It's a federated social network, which means you uh, as a user decide to um, sign up to an instance, which is like a specific server. And then that server or instance then communicates with all the other instances, uh, basically creating a web of social users um, so that you don't have one corporation dictating who can say what and to whom, which is, uh, well, I consider it a good thing. And um, a Twidier client can be used to browse Mastodon. Um, however, it's only in the newer versions and I needed to install the version in the F-Droid repositories because it was a newer version than was in the Play Store. And then it picked out all the other um, free and open source software I had in my system and it kind of got me thinking. I, I thought... Well, let's go through all the software that I regularly use and let's see if I can find a, uh, a you know, a usable counterpart in the F-Droid repositories. And I got pretty far. But not only that, uh, the software in the F-Droid repositories does seem to come from a different set of working values. And what I mean by that is from a di like a different workflow. Uh, a lot of the applications in the F-Droid repository will focus on doing things offline. And if you use applications from the F-Droid repository, you could actually end up uh, finding that if you travel to an area with bad mobile or Wi-Fi signal, that you can actually still do quite a lot because of the uh, the offline capability. Whereas with a lot of stuff in the Google Play Store, it's really just a, a, a web app, which requires the web to use, obviously. So I'm going to go through some of the decisions I made. I haven't gotten rid of everything in the App Store because uh, there are some things that are only released in the App Store that I really like and use. Um, but I'm going to go through one by one some of the applications here. Now, actually, um, before I go, I still have Twitter and the Steam client. Those are two uh, applications I use. I use Twitter because there is no public API for group chats, and I do tend to have quite a few group chats in the uh, you know the group DMs of Twitter. So I do have to keep the official Twitter client on my phone because they have withheld the uh, or they don't have a public API for group chats, which, uh, given that they've been around for quite some time now, is a bit of a crime on Twitter's part. Um, but you know, there you go. Um, and I also keep the Steam client around as well because a lot of people, uh, like Steam's one of those social networks, I suppose it's not really a social network, it kind of has social network elements to it, um, but a lot of my personal friends are on Steam and it's a very, like I regulate who's my friend on, on my Steam list quite a lot, so it's actually quite, uh, if I want to get in touch with someone, um, Steam sort of because of how I've set it up over the years is just really good and a lot and most people I know are on Steam and are on Steam at some point with some degree of regularity. For example, if I want to get in touch with someone through Twitter DMs, I'll send a Twitter DM, but for all I know, you know, the, the person on the other end might not sign into Twitter that often. Whereas with uh, with with Steam, if they play video games, I, I'll have an idea of of when I can expect them to pick up a message. And of course, there is al always email as well. Now, I am using the built-in Android email client as well, uh, simply because I email on my phone is something that I try and limit as much as possible. And I feel if I install like K9 onto it, which is an open source uh, mail uh, email client, then I'll start getting doing more and more email things on my phone. And I don't want to do that because email is for work. And I don't want to have work in my pocket following me around. I have email so that I get like a, a notification if, if, you know, it's a family member or a friend or something. But other than that, I really don't want to be doing work when I'm away from my computer. My computer is my workstation for work. So, um, so all I all I need email for is just basically a notification and, 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 and a quick overview for it. 
Um, I also have the Jitsi Meet client. Now, Jitsi is an open source video conferencing service, which is really, really good as well. I'm surprised it's as good as it is. I know that it's, they've been around for a while and they've had some time to work on their act. But Jitsi, particularly Jitsi Meet, which you can go, uh, which you can find if you go to meet, M-E-E-T dot jit, J-I-T dot S-I, um, meet dot jit dot C. I guess. Um, that's really good. That just allows you to set up a conference. Uh, there's no sign up required or anything like that. And it gets you straight to it. It's really, really good. Now, I have heard that there is some effort to try and get that into the F droid uh, store. Um, so we're hoping to see that um, quite soon. So uh, some of the apps I was looking at. Uh, also, I don't know if you're aware of Tusky. Tusky is a Mastodon client as well. I've got it. For some reason, I've got Twitter and Tusky. Uh, I think I'm trying them out side by side to see which one I like more. But the Tusky client, which is pretty good, is I found it easier to, to get to grips with and to set up. Um, there is some effort to get that into the F-Droid store, but as it currently stands, it's only available on F-Droid now. So yeah, like I said, the version of Twitter uh, in the F-Droid store is actually more up to date than the one in the Google Play store. Um, I have also replaced Firefox from uh, the Google Play Store with IceCat Mobile. So IceCat Mobile is basically a compiled version of Firefox, but it doesn't have the artwork because the artwork isn't generally considered the freest form of, of Firefox because Mozilla still have, I believe they have the trademark over the Firefox logo. Whereas if you really genuinely wanted the freest version of Firefox possible, it would have to be the version without licensed artwork, which is basically what IceCat is. I also had a look at RSS readers. Uh, the first one I looked at was Flim because I use that in the Google Play Store and I actually found out that the version in the F Droid repository was not as up to date as the version on the Google Play Store and the reason for that is that the version in the Google Play Store uh, makes use of um, some Google software tools that um, the free and open source um, version um, it, it basically makes it incompatible with um, the free and open source stuff, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, it's still technically open source, but it uses like non-free components. So the the version, the latest version with, that's all free is available in F-Droid, whereas the, just the latest version outright is available in the Google Play Store. So if you are a user of Flim and you want the latest version, then you probably are going to want to head to the Google Play Store if you don't mind about the non-free elements um, that are a part of it. Um, however, with Flim, I haven't noticed too much in terms of lack of usability, but I have also looked at, and it's been, it was a couple of years since the, um, since it was updated from that version. However, I did look around to see if there were RSS readers that were um, a little that were more current, and I did find uh, what did I find? I found Feeder F E E D E R, which is painted as a no frills, very simple and straightforward RSS reader, uh, and it is. I haven't had any problems with it. It's a bit more maintained. It doesn't have quite the number of features that Flim, Flim has, um, but really with an RSS reader, all you want is just something to, to let you know, you know, like news articles and podcasts and all that kind of thing and when they've been released. So uh, I don't mind like a basic RSS reader where all it provides you is, is a link directly straight over to the website. Um, that does the job enough for me. Um, so yeah, like think of feed um, Feeder as basically just a... A very standard RSS reader, uh, but it is current and updated. Um, I also use Privacy Browser as well. Now, Privacy Browser, uh, which uses the Tor network to um, to surf the net, is actually really quite good because it disables cookies and JavaScript by default, and but it has very easy ways to activate them. So it's really just a browser that's the safest possible way of browsing the internet. Now, it does use the Tor network, but it does. It isn't like the Tor browser or one of the sort of the official Tor browsers, I think, which might mean that you are not completely anonymous when you use it. Uh, with when you're browsing like with the, through the Tor network, uh, one of the tools you have to give yourself anon anonymity is that your browser setup is near identical to like thousands, if not tens of thousands, of other people. Whereas if you use like an interesting browser to browse the Tor network, then you could very well be finger fingerprinted. I found a pretty good note-taking application as well. It's called Just Notes. Uh, it is a very sort of bare bones, straight to the point uh, note-taking app. It's practically Notepad, but for Android. 
Uh, it all works offline, which is great. So if I am not connected to the internet and, um, you know, like there are plenty of places in Wales where the mobile phone signal is less than great. So I often find that um, stuff that works on my phone offline is, is something that it's nice to have, ha have around. And... Um, and just a simple note-taking app is, is quite good. Uh, one of the reasons I even got a smartphone in the first place was because um, I wanted to, like, be, well, you know, it's things like cameras and the ability to record things and take notes. It's a lot of tools all in one place. And one of the tools that it, that it, I bought to replace was a notebook and, and, and pen. So having a decent note-taking app is, is, is quite useful there. But yeah, it's all, it's all um, offline. It's all open source. It's all easy. There are probably a dozen different applications that can do the same thing. So I'm not going to like sing its praises too much. But um, yeah, it's, um, it's a little better than say Google Docs where um, you know, Google Docs has its place and, and it's very good for collaborative tools. But again, it's a little bit overkill if you just want a simple note taking app. And I just believe in, you know, you maybe even call it a superstition, but you know, it's the good practice of just not putting information out in the cloud that doesn't need to be there. Just, you know, it, it you never know when that information could be turned around and used against you as well. Um, because you know, a lot of people think, well, it's just my my personal data. It's just my just just little old me. I'm I'm no threat. I don't have any data worth stealing. Or and 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 a lot of people just use that to to brush off any kind of uh, responsibility for protecting their own data. But we forget that like that personal data can be used to severely manipulate you, and is used by the likes of Facebook to severely manipulate you. And there have been some articles that have come out in recent days that have shown the extent of which that happens, and it is incredibly worrying especially when it comes to advertising towards younger children as well. Um, but anyway, that aside, um, I also have OpenStreetMaps. Now, OpenStreetMaps is what I'm using to replace Google Maps, but I still have Google Maps on the phone. Google Maps is incredibly useful, and I know that it's incredibly sort of like creepy how it pinpoints you down and how it has so much information in such a small and convenient space. But when I travel to different cities, and I am not a city boy at heart, I am a country bumpkin, so cities are... You know, they're places where I tend to have to be on my toes a little bit more than most people, I would say. And having a map where, you know, I know where the nearest restaurant is, I know where, where you know, places are, the nearest train station, bus stations, all that kind of stuff, um, and, and not having to look it up on a computer or ask someone or try and find a travel guide or anything like that. Like, smartphones in general have made traveling so much easier. Um, and and the, the phone itself... Uh, not only does it replace things like like um, notepads and, um, and 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 date books and things like that, but it's pretty much um, replaced my laptop entirely. Um, to the point where now, where I, I no longer have a laptop, or it's, I no longer have a laptop with like my my daily driver OS or whatnot installed on it, because the phone just does that that you know that much stuff. But I keep Google Maps on it. Um, because it is just that useful and just and and because when it comes to like you know if you're driving out in the country as well um it's it's nice you know you you do tend to get lost from time to time and sat navs are really really useful um and to have one in your pocket is great now i have the open street map which does have all the sat navy stuff on there but i i'm not going to be uninstalling google maps yet because i don't want to find out that uh, open street maps isn't very good when I'm lost. Like that is the worst time to actually run that experiment live. So I am going to keep Google Maps around because it is just too uh, useful. Um, but I, from what I've seen from the initial trials of OpenStreetMaps, it does seem that it is in every way as good as Google Maps. It in even includes a lot of like points of interest nearby that is uh, is really quite populated as well. If I wanted to find points of interest in my local area around here, there are loads. It it it, it, it you know in on open street maps, it points out every convenience store, every garage, every clothes shop or restaurant or everything like that, uh, all up and down the high street. Like pretty much every other shop is labelled on the high street for open street maps. So it's uh, and and I you know I don't live anywhere interesting. I don't live in a city or anything like that. So uh, you know if it's if it's uh, recorded nearby where I live, then it, the chances are it's a pretty fleshed out map which is which is which is excellent um 
So just to round off with a few of the minor apps as well. Oh, I've got um, an application called Get Back GPS. This is a great one. I wish I had this back in my drinking days because it's a compass type app. And what you do is if you are in any location, so if I was standing here, I can then pinpoint that location on the compass as, for example, home. And then I could go out and travel and then I could pull up the compass app and it would point directly to where I uh, set that waypoint, just like in a video game. And that's great. And I say I could have used it in my drinking days because trying to make head or tails of a map when you're trying to find your way home from a pub crawl where you barely even know where you are, having an arrow that just points in the direct direction of, of where you need to go simplifies the equation so much. And it's useful in so many applications as well. If you um, park your car in like a big car park, and you, uh, you know, if, you know. Sometimes I'll go to a conference and I'll leave my car in parking for a, for a weekend, and. Uh, you don't always remember where you park it. It sometimes takes you a little longer than it should. And having that nice little waypoint to point where your car is parked, um, j again, it's just it just makes things easier. And I quite like it because it is like a map app, but it takes away the the map and you just have waypoints on a compass. And it does it does have that computer game feel. I don't know if the novelty of that will wear off, but it's quite cool. I've also replaced the YouTube app with something called SkyTube, which. Um, it claims to be a full-featured YouTube app. I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say it's full-featured. Uh, it just seems a bit lighter and just a bit more, um, just a bit of an alternative, really, more over anything else. Uh, I'll be honest, um, if I end up getting YouTube Red, I'll probably start go back to the official YouTube app as well. If I'm paying $9.99 or whatever the exchange rate is on that a month, I'm probably going to want to make some use of it. And YouTube Red's pretty good, actually, with the adpocalypse and everything. Um, I think that it's a, it's a good way to uh, increase independence, for not only just for like the platform of YouTube, so that it's not at the mercy of, of all these big advertisers, but it's a it's a better way for um, content creators to get paid. Like when it comes to adverts, it's it's incredible. You know, we make an incredibly small amount of money per you know thousand views compared to something like TV or even something like newspapers. Right? Um, my local newspaper gets eight thousand. Uh, copies out a week. Um, my channel gets that in like two days. So, um, but and my local newspaper has like a staff of you know like it has half a dozen staff or something as well. So you know and their advertisers, uh, you know they got loads of advertisers in that paper and they, you know they make a lot of money off it. But for some reason, internet advertising is just something that um, people don't pay great amount of money for. Um, but with YouTube Red. Um, it, it you you get more bang for your buck because the money goes directly to the content creators rather than through uh, through advertisers. Um, the number of people, like even though a very small percentage of you guys actually are YouTube Red subscribers, those of you that are ha uh, are disproportionately supporting this and other channels, which is kind of interesting in that regard. So. Um, so anyway, I digress. I've got a few apps that are like um, uh, I've got one that helps me with a video game that I this is kind of optional. I don't really need it. I could get rid of it if I was to actually uh, completely remove all the Google Play Store stuff from my phone. So I think that's about it from me today. Um, I just thought I might have a bit of a ramble about some of the open source applications on my phone uh, because I've been using them, trying them out and having uh, a bit of fun with them. But I do recommend you guys, if you are Android users, to um, uh, to check out the F-Droid repository. I'll put a link to as many of the applications as I think I've mentioned down in the comment section below if you want to check them out as well. Um, I don't do too much mobile stuff on this channel because this is a Linux desktop channel, but I thought that I might because I do consider Android to be Linux. I do consider it to be a Linux distribution. I know that a lot of uh, you folks don't necessarily do so um, because it doesn't use the GNU user space. So it's Linux, but it's not GNU slash Linux. Um, but I think that's still relevant. That's still important because the more devices that the Linux kernel is on, the better supported the Linux kernel will be, the more incentive there is for corporations to put lots of money towards it. Uh, you know, the more incentive it is to audit it for security errors and all that kind of stuff. So the fact that um, the Linux kernel is on a billion plus devices, even though it's not part of a Linux desktop distribution. I still consider that to be a win. And recent uh, statistics have outlined that Android is the operating system most commonly used to browse the internet now. 
Linux is everywhere except the desktop, and I really would like to see it make, you know, make a, a solid space on the desktop. It doesn't even need to be the dominant desktop pla platform for me to be happy. If it had like a Mac-sized share, that would I would be overjoyed. Um, and maybe one day that's, you know, we might see that happen. And maybe one day Microsoft will realize that they can make more money through an app store and therefore slowly migrate over to being just a Linux distribution of their own because why maintain a Microsoft kernel when Linux will do it for free and um, your app store is just on top of that Linux distribution? Hell, Microsoft could just take Ubuntu, slap the Microsoft app store on top of it and Bob's your uncle. They just, you know, they still, they'll still make a mint. And maybe one day, you know, Microsoft might gravitate towards that and maybe every single distribution might be based on the Linux kernel. You never know and it's not impossible and, you know, but... Um, but yeah, I can, you know, I, I, I consider Android to be Linux and it is, maybe it's a bit like the Dorian Gray deal. It's like, well, it's like someone wished that Linux would be the most popular operating system on the planet. Uh, and that wish was granted, but at a great cost. And that cost was that it was sponsored by a company that tracks you quite severely. It's like, well, you got a really good thing there, but it comes at a great cost. You know, I'm sure Oscar Wilde would have a chuckle at that. Anyway. I have rambled on for long enough. Thank you very much for hanging around and listening to me. Um, it's very kind of you. Uh, don't forget you can follow me on Mastodon. I'm probably doing, you know, more active there than I am on any other social network right about now. It's basically become the de facto social network of this channel that's not on, on YouTube. So if you guys want to catch up, chat some tech or politics or Pokemon. I don't know why those are the three things. I suppose tech makes it. Anyway, uh, I really am rambling now. I'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.